And welcome back. This is your man Warrior, and this is an event, marquee event called Supply Sabotage. Now, real quick before we go into that, um, I'm gonna tell everybody um, who's watching kind of a cadence of my videos. I know that they they released a cadence of the characters, of how the characters are gonna come out. You know, they're gonna come out, and then six weeks later go into Chromiums, and then six weeks later go into free to play somewhere on the board. Um, I thought that was a great idea. I think I should release a video cadence so people can kind of know what to expect from warriors channel in the future so um, how it has been going and how it will continue to go is i have a number and I, when i say a number i mean over 40 patrons who are requesting roster reviews most of them feel that people can learn and benefit from their rosters being reviewed and their mistakes being exposed and or the things they've done right being exposed and so um, i'm going to continue to do roster reviews whether people like it or not it's it's a part of um, my channel it's something that i exclusively do no other youtuber out there does um, so it's really cool and any roster review you should be able to learn and pick something up from however um, there are lots of other videos i do and i want to make sure that other people know when those videos are coming out so roster reviews will happen about every other video and then there will be every other video will be a an arena battle or an in-depth character review or an event video so uh, uh, 50 percent of my videos will be the traditional videos that i've always done and the other half will be these roster reviews now I'm putting out an exorbitant amount of videos. If you watch any other YouTuber, you know that I put out almost a video every single day. Most YouTubers put out one video a week. So I am giving a ton more content for you to watch and you can choose what you like to watch and what you don't. I know a lot of people though have commented they love these roster reviews and then other people that said we'd like other videos. Just be mindful, I do all <laughs> videos. I do the rosters and the non-roster review videos. Now, as far as the events, there's a whole bunch coming up. The first three that we're gonna talk about is uh, Spectre 1, which is gonna uh, unlock Kanan, and that's exciting. I think Kanan's gonna be probably one of the best uh, standalone characters. And when I say standalone, I mean a character that you could use in any other squad or any other arena team, you know, for, for Cantina, things like that. Um, and so I'm excited about him. The Cantankerous Clanker, we already have him coming in on the dailies. This allows you each day to come in here um, and attempt it. Now, it does unlock. There's three levels, three tiers. And the first one you could play pretty immediately. But the next two, you're going to have to get them to two star and then three star. So this is going to unlock throughout the month as you get your dailies, okay? And then the last is the su Supply Sabotage, which we're going to play. And... This is for Hera Sindula. Hera, um, her, I went in there and already played the first level. The first level, because um, there's four tiers, was, was easy. Um, and obviously, it's going to go 20, 40, 60, and 80 for the four tiers. It goes up by 20 each time. So most people should be able to beat all first three tiers relatively easily. And then the uh, fourth tier, unless you've been playing only a couple of weeks. Um, otherwise, you should be able to do that. And then tier four, we'll see. Uh, sometimes they build these kind of hard, and other times they do not. <clears throat> a lot of people are saying, hey, what do you think of the of the packs, uh, the two packs that dropped in. I will have a separate video specifically for both both of these packs for this um, particular bundle. But for now, this is the events. We're gonna go ahead and go into the event active. All right, so what we're gonna have a little bit of fun with this. We're gonna do tier two, tier three, and tier four. And in this, we're gonna see how many shards we unlock. And we're going to um, try to use just random teams that maybe don't make a lot of sense. But we don't want to take just a super overpowered team in. Uh, it's, it's just a little bit less fun that way. So why don't we take in some of my lower level clones. They're gear 7 or gear 8. We'll take in Ahsoka. Maybe Asajj. <laughs> and Dengar. Why not? A level 63 Dengar. There we go. We're around 30,000 arena power. That's still pretty high for this particular tier, but um, we should have no problems and showcase a few just different characters when we're playing these abilities. Now, what a lot of people don't know is these um, these packages, a lot of people go, oh, well, they're just sitting on the ground. Let's take out the troops first. What a lot of people don't realize is taking out the packages first will damage, if not completely kill, these characters. Now, it's teaching you about the different abilities as they always do. So it's saying play to strengths calls an ally to assist with increased damage and potency. So they want us to hit that so they can show you. We're going to go ahead and do that so they're happy. We'll select an ally. 
All right. And now I, I just wanted to show you what happens when these blow up, how they damage. That actually took away turn meter from the two. So they, they all do something different. See how it damaged them? That guy, the stormtrooper's like almost completely dead. And that one affected the scout troopers turn meter again. So it's pretty interesting. The boxes or the supply cargo actually do affect when you're playing the other characters. See that? She did an AOE, all the boxes exploded and all the characters almost died. Now she did do some damage to them too, but um, it's pretty cool that the boxes do play a role in damaging these characters. Why that makes sense right now is the, the guys are all underpowered, but when you get a little higher and your character, the characters you're going against are much more difficult, especially lower level players, you're going to need to know this so that way you can get every advantage possible. Look at that. One box blew up and damaged everything 50%. That's pretty awesome. Boom. I haven't even touched the players yet and they're all dead. I mean, look at that, nothing. They're literally at one life. So remember that when you're playing that these supply cargo crates, while they seem like no big deal, that's going to be the key for that level 80 plus last round if you're having difficulties in that last round. I'm gonna stick with this team, why not? They seem to do just fine in this battle and um, we're gonna go to tier three, it recommends 60 plus. Now they're gonna teach you about the backup plan. That's on a weakened ally. If the ally's defeated with the buff, they will be revived. So they're gonna teach you about this new ability. It's a brand new ability that's never existed. Huh, they didn't let me keep my existing team weird. I gotta go all the way down here. All right, let's try that same team. There you go. All right. I wish they would have kept it so I didn't have to reset them, but that's all right. Now, I'm not even sure they're going to be able to showcase this new ability. And the reason for that is this backup plan. It requires someone to die. So let's pick uh, someone we think might die like Echo. Now he gets this buff, it has a lock on it. That's a new feature after the latest update and it goes on any ability that can't be dispelled. So if it's on there, it's on there until it's utilized or, or the person's dead. So if you click on it, it'll say backup plan. It recovers health every turn. So it's gonna constantly regenerate health. And when he dies, he's gonna revive and it can't be dispelled. Now, a lot of people are like, hmm. So backup plan gives you a guaranteed revive and Boba Fett gives you a guaranteed kill with no revive. Which one supersedes which one? Boba Fett's supersedes. And this is why. This gives them a guaranteed revive and that the revive capability called backup plan can't be dispelled so you can't remove it. However, Boba, Boba Fett's ability execute takes away their life and does not allow. So the coding has overwritten uh, the, the coding for Boba Fett overwrites this ability. So for a lot of people that had that question, I know a lot of people were curious on my discord. This is why. So let's go ahead and go after the boxes. Those affect turn meter. It, it appears sometimes. And that hurt them a little bit, not as much. And I'm, people all want to know what, what Warrior's doing as far as gearing. I'm focused on Ahsoka right now. I've got her gear eight or gear nine. I'm working on Ahsoka. And the reason for that is I am working on getting Ahsoka so I can use her in phase one of the heroic AAT tank raid. Because at this point I can go, I, I've been able to go through all 15 rounds of the heroic AAT by my team and it doesn't at this point it's just a matter of how much damage i can do in the 15 rounds so ahsoka she does she's probably one of one of the highest hitting jedi in the game if not the highest hitting jedi in the game so let's target these boxes and see what they do boom look at that see the boxes man they're the they're the secret these white boxes, they hurt everybody. Boom, and they're all down to one health. 
So this is just mop up on aisle five for this event for sure. You don't even have to bring in a good team. <laughs> I mean, you could bring anyone in almost. And that was for the 60 plus tier. That wasn't, and that's another 10 shards. Wow. Okay. Well, I like how they're bringing in a little bit more generosity in the 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 unlocking of these characters. That's exciting because that's 40 shards so far that we've gotten 25, 5, and, and, and 10. And then there's this last one. On the last level is the strategy tips. It says Hera's leadership ability, Rise Together, grants all Phoenix Squadron members each other's passive abilities, um, which is their unique abilities. So the unique ability is the passives. So their basics aren't going to be shared. Their specials are not going to be shared. The only thing they will share, and their leadership abilities won't be shared, and she's the only one with leadership ability. So each one, other than Hera, has a unique. So the other five have a unique ability. That unique ability, if she is alive, will be shared amongst the, all of them if they're in the same squadron together. If a Phoenix ally uses a special ability, they gain turn meter. That's a secondary ability, which means that anytime they use a special, and all of them have about two specials, they're all going to gain turn meter from that. So it's, she's going to make them all very, very fast just due to this leadership ability. Speed mods are going to be less important on this team because she's going to speed them up. So that is pretty awesome. Let's go ahead and see how this battle goes. Again, I'm gonna try and use the exact same team that I was using. Um, they should be more than, you know, more than strong enough to beat this level. Trying to showcase, I mean, we got a couple of these characters that are level, you know, 60 and gear seven and gear eight, so. All right, it says Rise Together, that's the unique, lets Phoenix Squadron allies share their passive abilities with each other, which we're not going to see because I don't have any of the other <laughs> characters. So this is kind of something you can't really see. And then they gain turn meter whenever they use a special ability. This is only applicable for other Phoenix Squadron allies. So because I don't have any, you're not going to see anything about this ability. Now let's do the white box first. Boom, hurt them. All right, let's go ahead and do some debuffing. AoE. Boom. Yeah, she does no damage at all when she's little, but that's surprising, you know, almost 9,000 on a hit and she's, you know, gear seven or whatever. So that's, that's pretty good. <laughs> she just kind of sat over there. Let's chin check this guy. Boom! Stun. And he has that now the backup plan. So if he was to be killed, he would come back. By the way, this last one, all the other rounds were three rounds. This one is five. So you're going to have to last a little bit longer. So we'll get to really test the metal of our characters that I brought in. But I wanted to showcase some lighter weight characters so I didn't just zip through this. And all of these characters that I'm using right now are farmable. They're not all easily farmable, I didn't say that, but they're definitely people that you can, characters you can unlock and access. Boom, hurt them all. We'll give that to him since he's the one hurting the most. Dengar kind of takes care of himself. Do some debuffing. Didn't need to use that AOE, but why not? Ooh, he's exposed. That was the chance that she has is to expose the enemy. So that's pretty cool to see the expose happen. We'll just do basics. So we're going into round four. <laughs> hmm, okay. So maybe this is a reset. Just use our basics. Uh, 
that's probably what this is for just to kind of help reset so in the last round you kind of go in with your abilities let's do let's kill this box right here i think it's going to damage everyone boom let's do it again and wow i thought just maybe that this would be difficult he did the imperial officer level 81 did hit for a lot if you look echo is injured really bad but echo also doesn't have a lot of health either i think he's got like eight thousand health so he maybe got hit for eight grand um but those boxes were key again i didn't even have to bring in a good team and i wiped the floor with these levels now i'm glad they made it relatively easy for the majority the vast majority of players and another 25 wow okay that's definitely more generous than any other event that we've done. So I should be able to unlock her now. So let's go ahead and go over. And we'll come down to Phoenix Squadron. Let's 65. And the package they're selling is 25. So you'll be able to get her to 90 shards if you wanted to i'm not sure that that is a benefit necessarily but let's go ahead and activate her and see her in all her glory excellent very cool she's set up as a two star and we should yep be able to promote her to three star And now all you need is another, to get her to four star, 15 shards, and they will sell you 25 shards, which will be more than enough to get her to four star for the $10. So if you want to do that, you can, but this is like most of the other characters they're giving um, to us at three star. She's a pretty awesome character. She's got some pretty cool abilities. Something to keep in mind before I let you go is to use these characters, you must have all of them and you must have all of them maxed out. So if you want them to be competitive, you'll need to have all of them and you'll have to max them out. The biggest question then, if you do that is, will they be viable? And that remains to be seen. I think they're going to be similar to the clone or to the Rogue One Rebels in that they're going to be very uh, good together, but outside of that, they're not going to be as good. Um, so there'll probably be a couple of standouts that really shine. And I know that, you know, as soon as Hera's dead, some of those abilities that really make this team shine will be gone. So um, if you're not going to spend any money in the game, this this team comp may not be something you want to focus on. I always tell people, wherever your focus lies, stay Stay true to that focus. Stay in that game. Um, as always, have yourselves a wonderful afternoon. Keep your gaming on. Warrior, out.